And then I'm going to put the value of the cities in here. And it's going to apply to each. And then I'm going to put a comma and a space. Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess. And if you're new here, I am a government Power Platform developer. I first got into the Power Platform when COVID came. And my boss came to me, he was like, we have to have a form, we have to have one now, we have to be able to fill out this data. We need it in two days. And so I created a Power app in probably about two days, spending a good bit of time working. Uh, I don't wanna go into the exact specifics, but it was for COVID and uh, that's how I got into Power Apps. I was studying before then, uh, you know, how to do Power Apps, but my first official one really took place right at the beginning of COVID and we had to have a way to enter in data now. We couldn't wait and so that's when I really got into Power Apps. And so today I kind of want to touch on Power Automate. Um, I've seen a lot of people struggle with this issue so I want to touch on the statement or the action in Power Automate append to string variable. I've seen this drive people crazy. I know it drives people crazy so let's kind of uh, show you what I'm talking about and tell you how to fix this. All right, so imagine you have a multi-select column in SharePoint or, or who knows where the multi-select column is, right? It could be in Dataverse, but you have a choice field. And let's say we'll call it uh, cities. And this is another thing. So when you have a multi-select column, should you name it city or cities? I know this is really basic, but add the plural case into that column name just so people know that you can select multiple. So I'm gonna put some cities in here. So let's see here, we'll start with uh, New York, um, Dallas, Los Angeles, maybe Jacksonville, um, Detroit, Cleveland, Let's make sure I spelled Detroit right. I did not. So Detroit. Okay, so we have a few choices in there. And we're going to do checkboxes allow multi-select. Okay, so this could be in Power Apps. This could be in Dataverse. As long as you have a multi-select column. I have a very basic Power Automate here. And we're connecting to that same SharePoint site. So this is the SharePoint site. It's called Running Comments. I just kind of threw something together. And we're connecting to the locations list. So that's my list here it has two columns, uh, title and cities. So I'm actually going to create a new list. Let me create a new list. And it's going to be my cities text. Because we, we're going to convert that uh, choice field into a text field. All right, and then we'll just leave this title field like that. Now I'm in the same SharePoint site collection. I'm going to col connect to the My Cities text. There it is, the title field. And what's going to happen when I try and put that multi select column in here? So here's my cities, cities value. It puts it in an apply to each. And I've seen this drive people crazy. And I'm going to show you another example too. And so when it puts it in an apply to each, it's actually going to create a line on each one. Let me, let me show you what happens here. So we will just save. And then we'll test with a manual test. And then we'll create a new line item here in the locations. We'll create a new line item. So a new line item. But we're going to select multiple cities, you know, just a few in there. And then we'll hit save. Now watch what's going to happen on our next list. So if we open up my city's text, you'll see it created three lines, right? So if we add the ID in here, just so we can visualize that a little bit easier, we'll add the ID in here and we'll make that number one. So you can see there's three line items now. Now we don't want there to be three line items. Or maybe you do, maybe you do. But in this instance, I've seen this drive people crazy. So what I'm going to do in Power Automate is instead of the apply to each here, I'm going to take out the city's value, take out the cities. I'm going to pull it out. 
of the apply to each, right? The apply to each drives people crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna initiate a variable inside Power Automate. You know, people do it different ways. Some people, you know, do the compose action. A lot of times I just initiate a variable and my cities, oh, we'll do VAR my cities. And it's gonna be a string. Now there are multiple ways to do this. I'm just showing you the way that I do it that's simple. So what I'm gonna type in here is append, and I'm gonna append to string variable. And I'm gonna use my variable my cities, and then I'm gonna put the value of the cities in here, and it's gonna to apply to each, and then I'm gonna put a comma and a space. So if you if I zoom in right there, there's a comma and a space. And now in my create item, I will just use that variable. Now this is definitely useful if you're doing this multiple times in a Power Automate, you know, cause now I have the variable up here all set and you're gonna wanna rename this stuff. I always recommend renaming this, you know, rename this initialize variable var my cities, you know, do all that. I'm just not gonna do that during this video. And then we're gonna hit save and then we're gonna test again or we could just automatically test with a recent trigger. And now in my my city's text list, we can see it's all written in one line. Now this does leave a comma in there and maybe we don't want that comma at the end. So let's go back to Power Automate. Now after the apply to each, what I can do is I can compose I can compose my var my cities, but what I'm gonna do is, now once again, there's many ways to do this, but I, I wanna show this way because you know this is like a building block. So we're gonna go to expression on our compose action, expression, and we're gonna type in substring. Now when you type in substring with the parentheses, it, it kinda gives you a hint text of what it should look like. So it's saying string, start index, where does it start? And then what's the length? So in the substring, we're gonna say, okay, in the variable, so we'll click back on dynamic content. In my variable, where do we wanna start? We wanna start with character zero. And then where do we want to end at? And we're gonna say sub, and so we can look that, you know, the number, you know, the acquired number of the sub trahend is removed, that's hard to say. And we're gonna say it's the length. So this is the length of that variable and kind of go over here to the end. And then right here in the second parentheses, we're gonna say one, remove the last comma. Okay, so now we've composed, we have our variable here. We can pull in our compose outputs. Now you can rename this. I would recommend recommend renaming this, maybe var my cities um, output maybe. So now when you see it, you see var my cities output. And then we'll just save tests, automatic again, and we'll run again. And it's running, it's running, it's running in the background. I realized I made a mistake. I didn't pay attention to that space in there. So let's do it one more time. We're actually going to go to our substring, and we're gonna change it to two, because I added a space in there. And so now we'll test again. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna allow you to see my mistakes. I think when you see my mistakes, you, you realize that and you can see more things. So now since that substring did not work because there was a space in there, it's actually two characters. Now we've removed that comma. So that's just one way to, you know, work with a multi-choice select field. Let me show you another example where I've seen it drive other people crazy. Okay, let's say we're doing an approval. And we're gonna approve, um, let's say one of the locations. Someone writes a new location in here and we wanna approve it. All right, so I'm gonna start a new um, Power Automate. So when an item is created, we're going to approve. Approval I want is right here. So we're gonna do start and wait for an approval. 
And the approval type, there's lots of different options. I'm just going to say everyone must approve. Uh, this is the approval title. Assign to. So we're going to assign it to me. And these are the details. And the item link can be the link to the item. All right, so now let's say we send an email with the, the approval multi-choice uh, column in there. So we're going to send ourselves an email. So send an email. And we're going to send it to myself. Here is the approval email. And maybe you want to make this better, of course, right? And so we'll have the title. And we'll put in the title. Not from the approval, but from the when the item was created. And then next, we'll put in the city's value. Now watch what's going to happen. It's the same thing that happened before, right? Oh, we're in that apply to each. It's going to drive us crazy. Um, we can't do that. Also, let me show you another one that I've seen it drive people crazy on. So let's say, okay, we'll delete that, apply to each. Let's say we want to see the comments. So from the approval, there's response comments. Now, even though I only put one person's name in there, it still thinks that there could be multiple comments. So it's always going to put it in that apply to each. And I, I don't have multiple accounts to respond to this, but I'm going to show you um, ways around that. So let's remove the, the comments and take it out. I've seen this happen to a lot of people is the comments people want to put it in an email they want to put it in a SharePoint list they want to record the comments and they keep getting stuck in that apply to each and it, it drives them crazy and they send multiple emails right and you only want to send one email why would you want to send an email for every comment that an approver makes so what you're gonna do <clears throat> is you're gonna initialize a variable And this will be variable comments and it's a string and then we're going to append again to a string variable the variable comments and then we're just going to say we're going to say the approver name we'll put a dash in here and then we'll say approver comments or responses comments so now for every approver name, it's going to do the name, a dash, and their comments. And instead of the comments, since this is an email, I'm pretty sure you can add HTML in there and it's going to pick that up. So if you put a slash BR, which is a break, uh, so like the next line in HTML, it's going to pick that up in the email, right? Because um, an email is going to pick up that HTML. And let, just to double check it, I'll write something right here. Just so we can see that break. Um, I don't have two accounts to, to notice this with. So now in the comments, we'll put in the var comments. And I will save. Okay, so now we're going to test manual this time. And I'm going to create a new item in that list. So in this list, my new item, and we'll pick a few in here. It doesn't matter anymore. Um, we'll hit save, and then I'm going to go to my email. All right, so I'm in my email. I did get an approval. And we're going to approve or reject, and we can even write our comments in here. Um, this does seem new compared to my government tenant, so maybe this is um, different, but we can, we can write comments in here and write a good bit and then we'll just hit submit okay so we now approved that um, and we got a new email so in the new email we can see it wrote my title it wrote comments it wrote my name and what I wrote in the comments and then it did that break 
So now if you have multiple people commenting on an approval, you'll have a list of all those comments. You can put that in a SharePoint list. You can store that in Excel. You can write it in an email. That way you can pull those comments out. You have that um, apply to each. It's not driving you crazy anymore. You're not sending multiple emails. You're sending one email. You can see the HTML that's built into the email. So there's paragraph tag, BR tag. Maybe you don't even need the slash. Maybe it's just a BR will work. Um, and that's how you get around that apply to each. Put your variable and append a string variable and put an apply to each and then use that later on in your Power Automate. So I just wanna say I've seen that drive people crazy. The apply to each, people fight with it. They, they, they're like, ah, oh, why is it putting in an apply to each? It drives me crazy, I have to do all this. Well, there's a multiple choices and that's how Power Automate does it. You have to break it down and turn it into one uh, data line. Else it's gonna try and send you multiple emails. It's gonna write to SharePoint multiple times. Put your data in an append to string variable and it will automatically put it in an apply to each and then use that variable later on in your Power Automate. Thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe. My name is Andrew Hess. I will see you next week.